It's time for Alan McGordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. A dangerous heat wave will continue this week across portions of the central and southern plains, the lower Mississippi Valley, and along areas of the Gulf of Mexico. The combination of heat and humidity will result in daily maximum heat indexes of over 110, expanding through eastern Texas and the Arklatex into much of Louisiana and southern Mississippi through midweek. Closer to home today through tomorrow, we'll have scattered to numerous storms at times. As we have monsoonal flow for a few days, lightning, brief downpours, and gusting winds can be expected. Localized flooding is possible with storms, rain falling between a half to a full inch an hour. Thursday through the weekend, we're going to see well above normal temperatures return through the weekend. Heat advisories may need to be issued for the lowland areas. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. Dominic De La O, the man accused of shooting and killing Alamogordo police officer Anthony Ferguson, made his appearance in court yesterday. This was far from his first run-in with the law. The defendant was charged with and is pending trial, um, having been charged with aggravated fleeing, uh, DWI, drugs, and that date of that incident in the uh, indictment is January 24th, 2022. Prosecutors fought to keep De La O locked up in his other cases, but were unsuccessful. However, this time it's different. Judge John P. Sugg of New Mexico's 12th Judicial Court ruled that De La O will be held in jail on no bail or bond at the arraignment hearing yesterday. De La O is facing 10 charges, including first-degree murder, to which he pled not guilty. Judge Sugg said the trial will tentatively take place sometime between October and December of 2024. Local government positions are going to be filled for the city of Alamogordo at the next regular local election that's coming up on November 7th. Each position is a four-year term, and they're looking for commissioners for District 1, 3, 5, and 6. You can either vote for your current commissioner if he or she is running again, or maybe you want to run yourself. We heard from Republican Party of Otero County Vice Chair Josh Beasley. This year is uh, local elections. We have positions they open on Alamogordo City Council, Village Council. We have timber on water and soil conservation. Uh, we have a lot of positions open up in Cloudcroft. You know, now is your chance to make a change. If you don't like the way our city, our county, our state, our nation is going, the only way to change it is to get up, get involved, be part of the solution. To declare a candidacy for the positions, you must be a resident of New Mexico and must reside in the district you are seeking to run for. All declarations of candidacies shall be filed in the offices of Otero County Clerk on October 29th between 9 to 5. All declarations of candidacy for write-in candidates shall be filed in the office of County Clerk no later than September 5th between 9 to 5. The city of Alamogordo is excited to announce the completion of the North Scenic Drive extension to the Charlie Lee Memorial Relief Route Bypass. That's near Mesa Verde Ranch Road. The city of Alamogordo will be hosting a ceremonial ribbon cutting tomorrow morning at 730. You are invited to attend. Three prescribed burns are tentatively scheduled to take place in the Lincoln National Forest beginning Thursday and will continue through next week. Work will take place on the Brazil Push, that's a 90-acre portion of the forest between Redoso and Capitan. Jack's Peak, which is a 250-acre portion of the land near Ancho and the Smoky Bear Administration site located in Redoso. Lincoln National Forest Fire Staff Officer David Bales says conditions in the area will be closely monitored in the days leading up, during, and following the burn. Residents and visitors in Capitan, Corona, and Redoso can expect smoky conditions during and in the days following the burns. Signs marking the burn areas will be in place. This Saturday will be the 84th annual meeting of members of the Otero County Electric Co-op. It'll be happening at the Cloudcroft High School Gymnasium. Registrations at 8 a.m., meetings at 10 a.m. Barbecue lunch will be served after the meeting. For more information, see OCEC-INC.com. Tularosa announces Meet the Teacher event. You can grab a school supply list, get help with registration, meet your teacher. Also get help with immunization questions. More importantly, games and candy will be on hand. That's happening this Thursday at the Tularosa Intermediate School Playground from 4 to 6. And as a reminder, Alamogordo Public Schools resume school on August 10th and 11th. Check out the Facebook page for details on which your child's first day will be. And the Tularosa Municipal School's first day of school is August 7th. That's this coming Monday, folks. The White Sands Missile Range Road Closure Hotline is still not functioning. 
When we spoke with them about the issue, they confirmed it wasn't working, so we asked when it was going to be repaired. Uh, I have no idea. It's kind of, it's off and on. That was a week ago. The White Sands Missile Range Twitter has not been updated in nearly a month. Best I can tell you is be aware of warning signs and lights if traveling along the highway. Today we introduce a brand new feature here on Crazy Radio with Pastor Johnny Walker. This is Pastor Johnny Walker with our weekly introspection. A little positivity for our hectic lives, a little sunshine on a cloudy day. Don't look down. Before I traded my motorcycles in for car seats, I used to enjoy riding. But one of the best lessons I was ever taught was to never look down. Don't look down six feet in front of you. You always look ahead to see the path ahead of you so you can properly react to traffic, hazard, road signs, and pedestrians. To avoid accidents in Manhattan, uh, motorcyclists need to keep their head up and have great vision. I find this also true about life. We need to live in the present and plan for the future. Manage your moments and believe for better. Every decision you make today should make tomorrow better. It should bring you one day closer to accomplishing your goal, one day closer to finishing what you started, one day closer to obtaining your dream. Looking down will cause you to focus on today and lose sight you need for tomorrow. Look through the turns of life and see yourself better. Keep your head up and know that tomorrow will be even better than today. I'm Pastor Johnny Walker, inviting you to join us at New Covenant Worship Center, 1030 a.m. each Sunday, 3001 Thunder Road in Alamogordo for services. Or we will visit next Tuesday right here on Crazy Radio. The New Mexico Taxation and Revenue Department announced that this year's back-to-school tax holiday is this weekend, happening between Friday, August 4th and ending Sunday, August 6th. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. AlamogordoTownNews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you, and we bring it to you directly. Plus, local sports, cultural arts, and events. Online, AlamogordoTownNews.com. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. President Joe Biden will be traveling to Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah next week. He's expected to talk about his administration's efforts to combat climate change as the region endures a brutally hot summer with soaring temperatures while ignoring the increased solar activity, including a particularly strong solar flare emitted in early July. When asked about his visit to the western states, Biden had this to say. And the aqua and the whole strong. And as I... Biden is also expected to discuss inflation. Joe has proven himself an expert on inflation, but I do hold some reservations about his plans on reductions. State lawmakers' recent actions are having a direct effect on the shooting death of a 13-year-old girl in Cuesta. That's a town about half an hour north of Taos. Lawmakers passed Benny's Law to inflict penalties for gun owners if a minor gets a hold of that gun and shoots somebody. As of Sunday night, a teenage boy and his father are both facing charges and are currently in jail. The deadly shooting happened Friday afternoon in Cuesta. Police say a 14-year-old boy shot and killed a 13-year-old girl. State police say four teenagers were hanging out at a home alone when the boy took out his father's gun and shot the girl. The son is facing first-degree murder charges and assault on an officer, among other charges. The father is facing a charge under Benny's law because it was his gun. The exact charge is negligent, making a firearm accessible to a minor, resulting in death. This is the first time the bill is being used in order to press charges. State Representative Pamela Herndon, the author of Benny's bill, spoke with KOB. My initial reaction was disappointment and sadness because we had spent a lot of time really warning adults and informing adults about keeping their firearms safely stored. And it was really, really sad to hear about what happened in Cuesta. Benny's law was introduced more than two years ago, and it officially went into effect last month. But it officially went into effect in June. The law stems from a shooting that killed Benny Hargrove at Washington Middle School after a teenager brought his father's gun from home. 
Las Cruces police confirmed that a person is dead following a motorcycle crash. Investigators say the crash happened just before 2.30 p.m. yesterday on University Avenue near I-25. Details are limited at this time, but it appears to be a single vehicle crash. In the second incident of the year, the New Mexico Department of Health is once again saying that they've accidentally exposed personal information. Officials say they're working on fixing internal security issues. I thought they were working on that last time this happened. The department says they sent a file to Habitat for Humanity, which somehow contained data that could expose some people's personal information. The health department says they discovered the mistake in mid-July and don't have any evidence that suggests the data has been misused. Let's be honest, nor would they admit it if it had. The New Mexico Department of Health says they've notified individuals whose information may have been compromised, and the department has also offered an apology. Oh, well, there we go. They're sorry. It's all okay now. Everything is as it was once again. Ugh. Earlier this year, the department accidentally released the personal information of deceased locals. The department says individuals with questions about their privacy following the latest data release can email the department's chief privacy officer at privacy at doh.nm.gov. Dollars to Donuts say you never get anything more than a form letter back. Virgin Galactic is sending space tourists into weightlessness. Three people will take off next month, including a couple of contest winners, as well as Virgin's first paying customer. An adventure among the stars is something that John Goodwin is less than two weeks away from, and he didn't think it was possible because of a health condition. Goodwin spoke with KRQE. The fact that I'm now the one of three of the first commercial t- trips to go into space, and with suffering with Parkinson's for nine years, it just shows you this attitude of space for all. To this date, less than 700 people have traveled to space. Goodwin's going to be the first Olympian to head into space, and that flight is currently scheduled for August 10th. For now, Virgin is anticipating taking one commercial flight every month from the spaceport. Weather's coming up in just 30 seconds. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. The Alamogordo Center of Commerce presents the third annual Tularosa Basin Open Golf Tournament, Saturday, August 26th at Desert Lakes Golf Course, featuring, featuring celebrity, celebrity guest John Carlos. Contact the Center of Commerce today to sponsor our guest speaker, breakfast and lunch, golf handbag, and more. Golfers, Golfers. call Desert Lakes at 575-439-0290 to secure your sponsor in the four-man scramble best ball tournament. See you on the green. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for mostly sunny skies with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Winds could gust as high as 18 miles per hour. Partly cloudy tonight with a 30% chance of showers and storms. Sunny tomorrow with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Your high today in the basin, 96. Low tonight, 72. High tomorrow, 97. And cloud croft increasing cloudiness with a 70% chance of showers and storms. New rainfall amounts between a quarter to a half inch expected. Partly cloudy skies tonight with a 30% chance of showers and storms. Mostly sunny tomorrow, showers and storms are likely. Your high today in cloud croft, 73. Low tonight, 54. High tomorrow, 74 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com. And learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. We've also launched the KALH Crazy Radio YouTube channel, which will feature our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. That concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.